Hello, I'm Anthony William. You're listening to the Medical Medium Radio Show, where each week I talk about the most advanced healing information and secrets about health, much of which is not found anywhere else and is decades ahead of what's out there now. The information on this show, it's the only health show that has information that doesn't come from interest groups, medical funding with strings attached, botched research, lobbyists, internal kickbacks, persuaded belief systems, private panels of influencers, health field payoffs, or trendy traps, which are both in conventional and alternative medical communities. Can you believe that? The information here all comes from an untampered with advanced clean source, a higher source, the spirit of compassion. It's nothing more healing than compassion. And if you think that you know, how can alternative medicine be tainted like conventional medicine is? Then you just, you don't know how it works. I'm not saying that in a negative way or anything. I'm just saying, how are we supposed to know? No one's really supposed to know. So it's not that, it's not something you just, it's naturally you're supposed to know where you can read and find out about. So we're not going to know. And the reason why it's like this, here's, here's the deal with, you know, conventional medicine. When conventional medicine is funded, it's funded by interest groups. It's funded for reasons to send something in a direction it needs to go into, especially controversial, you know, very controversy in, 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 in illness, in chronic illness, especially in chronic illness. Like, for instance, genes. All the money is going to get funded into genes. Nothing but genes, gene, gene research, gene research. Billions of dollars is going to go into gene research because – that's a better place to sink money because it's alluring, it's attractive, and it puts the blame on you. And we do have complicated gene structures within our beings. So it's a great place for science to have a blast and have fun. It's not the answer for chronic illness on any level. It's not the reason why you're sick and it puts the blame on you. But the, but the money is going to go into there. It has, so it has to go into there for reasons. So every single thing could be blamed on genes one way or another, whether it's cancer, whether it's you name it. So all that can happen. That's number one. When it comes down to alternative medicine, when it comes down to alternative medicine, it, the really good discoveries are totally underfunded. They're underfunded. There's not a lot of interest groups behind it. There's not a lot of that medical funding with strings attached, botched research, lobbyists, persuaded belief systems. When it comes, that's what's great about alternative medicine science. But the problem is it's getting invaded and it has been invaded. So what's happening is funding with all these different persuaded belief systems and private panels of influencers and health field payoffs and trendy traps, all that is now starting to saturate our alternative communities, just so you know. So that you still think, no matter what, that, that uh, autoimmune is your body attacking itself, that genes are the reason why you're sick. You see, it's, it's crossing over. But there's some daring, amazing, amazing, you know, uh, funded things that have occurred in alternative medicine that have brought us miracles, miracles in supplementation like no other, like some incredible things. So it's not completely all poisoned. It's an, it's an amazing place. It's still our sanctuary but alternative and conventional has joined forces together, and that you would think is a great thing. But actually, you know, when they were further apart, the alternative medicine was was way less tainted back in the old days, way less tainted. It wasn't poisoned. I'm not talking about the doctors. Doctors are all great. Not, we're, we're not talking about doctors. We're talking about the structures behind it, the infrastructures behind all of it. We're talking about that. We're not talking about the doctors themselves. This is important to understand. I have to get this message across to you um, because it, it, the knowledge, knowledge is really power when you're healing so you don't get sucked into something. So you don't think because you got the BRAC1, BRAC2 gene that, you ha that you, you're doomed for breast cancer because that's not what causes breast cancer because most breast cancer cases don't have that gene. So where's that falling? How come that's not being talked about? Because it doesn't. It's not the money wise. It's the money. It's where the money goes. It's where the it's where the groups have to the thumb has to be put on the scale a certain way. Now, some of you might think this is kind of you know boring or something. Let's get on with the show. But I I, I have some of you might need to know this, so I have to tell you. 
how it works. And this health show is not contaminated with anything like that because it comes from spirit. And that's the whole whole point, the information. So are you ready? We're going to be talking about some good stuff. Today, today we're talking about parasites. And I know that this is a big deal for so many of you. Um, and I know that, listen, I know that the parasite thing is something that's really, really becoming a trend, a trend that's so, uh, getting so deeply ingrained in everyone. And you you would think, well, why didn't I do a parasite show before that? Why would I have not done a parasite show before that? One of the reasons I haven't done, you know, a parasite show till now is because people who are diagnosed with parasitical infections really are di- are diagnosed wrong. <laughs> That's why, because once again, because the, you know, because the medical communities don't know what's wrong with people, I mean, they don't know what's causing their fibromyalgia, they don't know what's causing their stomach aches, they don't know what's causing their SIBO, they don't know what's causing whatever it is. It, because of this. Um, parasites are being the fault. You know, that's one of the, that's one of the scapegoats. It's one of the way out right now. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. If you're a practitioner listening to the show and you're, you know, saying, you know, if you think someone's got a parasite, you're dressing it naturally. I'm all for it because chances are you're going after without knowing something else that's causing a problem. Do you see what I was, you see what I'm talking about there? Yeah, you're right. And so what that means is most people have something else that's happening inside of them that just gets pointed to parasites, and, and that's how it works. See, a lot of people have injuries in the intestinal tract from bacteria, from the E. coli in there for 30 years, from um, different you know, groups of streptococcus uh, you know, infections, old chronic ones that are deep in there causing diverticulitis and everything else, E. coli and all these other things, and, and you know, things that are just in there. And it just gets pointed to parasites. And so what happens is people do all these different anti-parasitical cleanses, all these different things. And some people start feeling a little better because they're knocking down a bacterial load. They're knocking down some other kind of load or a viral load or something else. And so I'm not – I'm okay if everybody's saying, hey, you got parasites, and that's a new catchphrase now. Hey, you got parasites. Try this new cleanse. Oh, try this with different herbs. And I'm okay with that. But it didn't need its own show because what's really happening in people mostly we're covering in all of our shows. And I don't mean to be snarky about it at all on any level um, because I do want to talk about parasites and it deserves its own show. Okay, It does deserve its own show because I'm going to talk about it so I could clear the air and and really open it up for you guys because <laughs> because it's important. Um you know, when someone is called a parasite, you know, like if somebody is called a parasite, it normally means that, you know, they're taking something from you all the time and they never give anything in return ever. Whatever that is, nothing, not even love. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not talking about somebody giving you something in return that actually is tangible, this non tangible stuff, you know, like love and, and compassion or, or lending an ear or whatever it is. You know, so when somebody's called a parasite, it literally means it's someone who's not giving anything back on any level, like nothing, not even, not even psychic positive energy, not even psychic positive energy. Um, you know what I mean? Like a loving thought that, tr- that transcends space and time and gets to the person that, you know, literally rides on a frequency and gets to the person. Not even that, you know what I mean? So it gets down to the lowest of low where... Someone might be taking from you, completely taking from you, completely taking from you, but they don't even have, they don't even care. They don't care if you live or die or whatever it is. And that, that would be a person that would be probably called a parasite. Right? So it would be, you know, um, nothing but that. But, but when it comes down to parasites in the body, parasites in the body, um, it would have to be a parasite, a real parasite, that's really taking from you, taking from you fast and furious, taking from you really hard and, 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 and in a bad way and hurting you in a hard and bad way without ever giving you anything, not even a lesson in life. 
because some bugs give us lessons in life in our life. Some bugs teach us a lot. You know, when you're chronically ill with with a virus or anything else, and you're chronically ill, um, and you're experiencing whatever it is, there's there's learning that can it it it, it oh my god it drives you to rise, rise above. Especially when you're in the process of of learning finally information to finally heal it. And then all that suffering you went through and all that hell you went through and all that confusion and all those doctor visits and all the different diagnoses and everything else, man, it turns to just gold, liquid gold. And and you start rising, you start rising above with that gold and that bug gave you something. That bug gave you something. That's not a parasite. That's not a parasite. Oh, bacteria and viruses and stuff like that. Those aren't parasites. They're not. Because, you know, they can give you, you know, even even when you look at Epstein-Barr, Epstein-Barr a long, long, long time ago was a friendly virus. And I never talked about this in, in completion. And I'm saving it because it, save it, I'll save it for a, a, another day because it's, it's, I, I put a whole chapter on Epstein Barr that I've never even talked about, you guys, in the thyroid healing book. I mean, anybody who's interested, your mind's just going to just explode when you read it, and um, um, in a great way. <laughs> and an Epstein Barr was a really, really friendly bug, really friendly. In fact, it only worked for us, not against us. It hit the dark side over the years because we forced it to. Conventional medicine forced it to, and the industries. But the point is, is that not even, you know, bacteria and viruses are parasites. Because in some way, some shape or form, they've given us something or will give us something in return. You can't get from a real parasite that's in the body, a real parasite that's in the body. And you might be thinking, well, God, this is scary. Well, if you had a real parasite in the body, then why didn't you do a show on this? Because a real parasite in the body is short-lived or you're short-lived. That means do or die. So chances are 99% of you who are still alive and in the moment never had a parasitical infection ever because a real parasitical infection, a real one, usually knocks us off because it's either you win or it wins. You eat raw pork. You have the 105 temperature of t- fever. You're in ICU. You're dying. Or your body kills it and you win. There's no in between. You don't sit there with that pork parasite infection and live with it after that. You don't walk out of the hospital and get home and recover and still have that parasite in you. It's gone and dead or you would be gone and dead. Another reason why not to eat pork, by the way, because if somebody undercooks it or somebody, you know, somebody's at a barbecue and they're, you know, they got some pork ribs on the grill and they're that barbecue brush that's in the sauce went on the raw, you know, put it on the raw, the raw uh, ribs. And then the rib, I talked about that right in the food poisoning show. And then you put the, you know, you know that brush is contaminated and you're putting it on even later on after it's, you know, almost cooked on the grill, but yet. The bacteria is not killed off or the parasites aren't killed off. You're eating that. Then you're, you know, diarrhea and vomiting until blood comes out of you until you're dead or you survive it. That's, that's, that's what a parasite is. That's why I haven't done a show on it really because everything else in between, most everything else in between are streptococcal infections, E. coli infections. Now look, the, you guys, I'm probably pissing somebody off today. And the one thing is, I'll tell you right now, being the messenger of truth with spirit, of spirit's truth in the health field. It comes with a lot of pain on my end, a lot of pain in the brain because I'm always peeing off people. And, you know, and, and people that have deep embedded belief systems that have been formulated from trendy traps and stuff like that. And I always have to break that ice and I feel it over here. That's why I feel it over here. So there's somebody out there, because I could sense it, I could feel it, that's like, look, look what he's doing. He's, he's putting down the parasitical you know, world that, we're, that the alternative medicine is building upon right now, building temples out of, making millions of dollars out of, and eventually billions down the road. 
and he's trying to break that temple down. I'm just trying to tell you, I'm just trying to tell you right now that when it comes down to parasites, most parasites, I'm going to go into it a little bit different and a little, because some of you are like, what about worms? Worms can live in people. I know what you're thinking. (laughs) I get it. We're going to cover that. Worms are a different kind of bug. They're worms. Worms are worms. I'm not talking about a lot of dangerous protozoa types are different. The parasites that are protozoa based and amoeba based, uh, amoebic, amoebic groups and stuff. It's different. It's different. Worms are worms. Worms can live in us for the most part. Not all of them. But, but many of them can live in us. Many of them can. And, and, and they shouldn't even be listed as a parasite. They shouldn't even be listed as a parasite. Because worms actually are you know, they're not good for us to have. Believe me, they're not good for us to have. But they don't do the whole thing where they take you out. You can live with them. You don't want to live with them. But you can live with them. And they do actually rid garbage in our system. It's just that they're ridding good stuff too. They do actually eat and, and, and take away garbage out of our system. They love the garbage that's in our system. And, and when they release poison from that garbage, it's not like super neurotoxic. It's not like super dermatoxic. It's not super, super dangerous noxically. It's just, it's just, but so worms are really kind of a separate group. They should be separated from parasite. We don't want worms in us, but they should be separated. So, so, okay, let's, let's keep on going here. Let's keep this going. When it comes down to a parasitical infection and you're in Mexico and you drink some bad water, or if you're in the Dominican Republic, wherever you, and yeah, I, I've I've seen people, you know, I've seen people eat street food in the Dominican Republic and just almost die. And wherever it is, I'm not trying to make fun of DR. I'm trying not to make fun of Mexico, whatever it is. It's the U.S. in the U.S. Uh, Joe's Bar and Grill. Uh, no specific Joe's Bar and Grill. There's probably a million of them in the U.S. I'm just saying, right? And um, and you can you can actually get a dangerous parasite. Food poisoning. Food poisoning is a very, very dangerous. Here's the, here's the thing what's going on here. Parasites, we don't even have our finger on how many different strange microorganisms are on, like, you know, contaminated meat or contaminated chicken or, or, on, in, in, certain, or in certain swamps or in certain still water. You know, we don't even have our, you know, our fingers on the pulse of a lot of those bugs. But those bugs, those bugs give you the option of it beating you or you beat it. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a violent vomit, diarrhea, could be milder versions, but nonetheless, you got to beat it or it can beat you. That's how it works. And that's why there's life or death when it comes down to parasitical infections. It's why it's life or death for real parasitical infections. And, you, and, 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 you know, that, that's, that's how it works. And, you know, I know, I know a lot of doctors work in hospitals and a lot of nurses uh, over the years. And their most dreaded, one of their most dreaded things next to actual real, you know, horrific physical damage and people coming in really, really injured in car crashes and so forth and, and God knows what else and chainsaw accidents and everything else that occurs in our life you know, every, just whatever it is. And in, when people come in and they got the stomach problem because they picked up a parasite and they picked up a, a, a dangerous bug, it's one of the most dread, dreaded situations because basically what it means is they, they're in bed. If they're, if they're vomiting and they're having diarrhea, it's not stoppable. Many times they have to induce coma in the, in the ER in the hospital. So when you're at somebody's barbecue and you pick up a parasite, the real deal, from pork or from beef, you, you might have to be forced into a coma in, at, in, 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 in the doctor, I mean in the hospital. And, and they, they hate it. I've talked to doctors about this forever and nurses. They hate it because all they could do is give you morphine. That's all they could do is give you morphine for the pain. And they do. They give you morphine for the pain and they hope for the best. They got their fingers crossed and hope for the best. That's a parasitical infection, okay? 
That's a parasitical infection right there. Malaria is another parasitical infection, right? Malaria. And what does malaria do? Well, it, it, it kills people. It's a parasitical infection. But you get rid of it. It's either you or malaria. Whether you get help from, from medicine or not, it's you or malaria. So you win. Most people win with malaria. But it, you can't just live with it. It's you or malaria. That's how a parasite works. That's what I mean. The amoebic group. It's you or the amoeba. That's it. The protozoa groups. It's you or the protozoa. You drink some sick water somewhere in some nearby pond. It's you or the protozoa. And, and our bodies are amazing. They win. They win. They beat the parasite, parasitical infection. They beat it and you win. You ever get, you know, this kind of contamination in your life, you're going to win. You hang in there. You're going to win. You keep, a, you keep a light heart through the agony and pain. If you ever run across this in your life, maybe you have. I run across people that are like, oh, man, you wouldn't believe it. I was down in New Orleans and was, you know, was eating in this restaurant. Or I was down in here and I was down in – or I was wherever and I, I got the worst food poisoning. I, I, you couldn't believe what I went through. It was vomiting blood. And, yeah, no, you're going to win. You're going to win. You got to know that in your heart and soul for those, those people that get that. And then there's also milder versions where it hits real quick. You vomit it out. It's out of your system. You got it out. Or, you know, diarrhea. Or your body kills it fast. A lot of times people's bodies just kill these, but these parasites quick, like bam, and you win fast right off the running. Bam, you win. But what I'm trying to tell you is what people are getting diagnosed with their long-term chronic fatigue and everything else is not parasitical infections. That's not. And then what, you might be saying, well, what about Babesia, the Lyme, Lyme parasite? Well, that's a hybrid. That's bacteria. That's a hybrid. They shouldn't even name that a parasite. Babesia shouldn't even be named by all rights should not be named a parasite. It's a hybrid. It's like part parasite, three quarters bacteria. That's not a parasite. And it's harmless, by the way. Harmless. That one's harmless. We have a tremendous amount of harmless bacteria that resides inside of us in harmless microorganisms. Okay. There's neutral bugs in us. Neutral they don't do anything to us. They don't give us anything, meaning they don't give us anything back, but they don't do anything to us. I don't know if you know any people like that. They don't give you anything, but they don't do anything to you either. I don't know if you know anybody. I'm trying to think if I know anybody who known anybody in the past. Not doing anything for you, but not hurting you either. That's neutral. That's neutral. And there's tremendous amount of neutral bacteria and, and bugs in us and, and microorganisms that are in us. That's neutral. Then there's pro, beneficial microorganisms and bugs and, and bacteria in us. There's good bacteria in us. Plenty of it. Plenty of good bacteria in us. And that's in us. Where it's doing something for you. In fact, doing more for you than you're doing for it. How about that? You become the parasite. How about that one? <laughs> All right. Because you got bacteria that's in you that's beneficial and it's always doing something for you. Always doing something for you. And what are you doing? You're eating all kinds of garbage and you're eating all kinds of crap. And you're eat, you know what I mean? And, and you're eating everything and, and uh, that you shouldn't be eating. And, you know, and, that, and that beneficial bacteria is like, what are you doing to me, man? What are you doing to me? Because I'm sitting here doing all this good for you. You're the one being a parasite. You're the one being a troublemaker. Um, so, and there's that kind of bacteria that's always doing something good for you. And then there's bacteria that's not doing really anything physically good for you, but it's doing something spiritually good for you. Yeah. Like when we're chronically ill and we're going through our trials with it and we become people, we, we climb out of it. We come people, we, we could become a soul and a person and a spirit. You never did just, we never thought resided inside of us. Yeah, sure. It's bacteria and 
it's strep that could be causing SIBO, like I talked about in the last show. It's, it's you know, it, it's Epstein Barr. It's it, you know, shingles, cytomegalovirus, different kinds of viruses, offshoots, different kinds of bacteria, and it pushes us to our limits. Pushes us to our limits. You better believe it. Put, puts us on the edge. And when we conquer it with the right information, when we move forward with the right knowledge, and we rise above it. And we're healing. Like, look, look at the Instagram stories on Medical Medium Instagram. You go there and you, you go to my Instagram and you'll see the stories of people healing. And those are the people healing, you know, from the books and in the blogs and the shows and everything. But I'm going to tell you right now, before I did the books and the blogs and the shows and everything else, and I've been doing this for 35 years, I've watched people heal for 35 years. My office was packed. Since I was, you know, a kid and in, in, I've watched people climb out of it and become people you wouldn't believe. So it's not, that's not a parasite. That's a virus that, that, you know, actually, actually, like I said, in the old days really didn't cause much trouble. It's causing more trouble now because of what's happening in the world. But, and like I said, I talk about that in thyroid healing in real, real deep in a deep way. Um, so, you know, I want to talk about like, for instance, like the toxoplasma variety, like if you get, if you're eating fork, pork or meat or something like that, raw meat or anything like that, and you got to watch out, it, it, you could be in a, um, a restaurant, order a salad and it could be, you know, it still could have that on there. So I, if you go to restaurants that, that aren't plant-based order cooked food, if you are a animal protein kind of person, you love animal protein, don't even eat a don't eat a raw salad either at at a restaurant don't order anything cooked if you want vegetables you have them cooked with your with your meat you know with your chicken or whatever i always say that it's important so like toxoplasma that that that's something you get from eating something like that this is that bug can literally be hallucinogenic it's so toxic and and we beat it we beat it but it has beaten people and that's your definition of a real parasite, real parasite. Um, and I wanted to I want to tell you a couple of things too. We're going to cover a whole bunch of areas here. Um, so, when it comes down to the parasite world now, with alternative medicine and in, in conventional combined now, at the rate we're going, where it's all combining holistically. People are being diagnosed with the parasites. They're getting the cleanses. I'm sure you've been offered different parasitical cleanses and everything. And, and the thing is, is that a lot of times, a lot of the different herbal cleanses, you know, they, they offer a lot anyway. They got all the different herbs in it. It could be helpful in different ways. Um, the reason why people feel like they got long-term parasitical issues too when it falls into the ballpark is because they got scar tissue and injuries in their intestinal tract and colon from old pockets of E. coli, old pockets of bacteria, old pockets of streptococcal, streptococcus, old, old um, deposits of viral, viral nature too. When you get stool samples, it's easy to call a parasite out in a stool sample because in a stool sample, you'll have body casings of all kinds of bugs. You have to understand something. If you took a whole bunch of insects and you mashed them up, you mashed them up, all their body parts kind of just, you know, kind of were broken apart and collapsed and put together, you really wouldn't know what you're looking at. We're not there yet with science and research, meaning it would be really hard when it comes down to internally of what's going on, especially really hard, really, really, really hard to know what you're dealing with. It's, it's difficult the the amount of 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 byproduct that comes off of Epstein Barr alone from the liver that fills the intestinal tract can throw any single practitioner into believing you have a parasitical infection times ten in one minute. I'm just telling you right now, plain old basic friendly Epstein, you know whatever you know uh, annoying Epstein Barr. I mean, inside the liver, literally inside the nation's liver. Never mind globally. You know, and at different levels, spouting out lots of byproduct, viral casings, dead viral casings. There's there's different types of mutated strains of, um, and I talk about this in the thyroid healing book. I've never talked about this before. There's different types of 
there's different strains, mutated versions of Epstein-Barr that shapeshift, and they shapeshift the reason to get into certain organs in our lives. And, and when they shapeshift, they can actually change their casings. Their casings change. Those casings usually get you know, um, seen as a spirochete casing. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. And also other types of casings that are not, you know, that are not considered unibacterial or whatever, but considered just different varieties of parasites. Any kind of evidence of, um, of bacteria also, of, of bacteria too, not just viral, being left over because it dies and then it, it you know, it, it reproduces and dies off, reproduces, dies off, reproduces, dies off. The liver is totally just trying to kick this stuff out. It stuff's inside the colon. All of this makes, makes a mash and a mess easily can be identified as parasitical infection. Plus, there's bugs in us that aren't causing harm in the moment that will be identified. And so microorganisms and bugs, different kinds and um, different shapes and sizes will be identified as parasitical activity, even though it's not even causing trouble, not even causing the problem, not even being the real issue to why somebody is chronically ill with fatigue, to why somebody's chronically ill with aches and pains, to why someone's chronically ill in their gut. And, and they'll be, you know, be picking on the wrong bugs. And that happens too all the time. But what, what in the end occurs here is you got a meaningful, wonderful doctor or practitioner that cares and knows you got something going on, could diagnose it parasites, could diagnose it anything. Fine. And then offer something natural, I'm happy. What do you think happened with Lyme? Now, now all the Lyme doctors are backing down on the antibiotics because they knew because they watched their forefather Lyme doctors. Their mentors uh, from 30 years ago bombard people with, with antibiotics till the cows came home. Then they lowered the doses. Then they made the doses longer but smaller doses. Now they're like, there's a lot of Lyme doctors. They don't want to go near antibiotics. Don't even want to go near it because they see the wake it caused compared to what using cat's claw and intravenous vitamins and everything else they're using. And, and realizing that whatever's going on, Lyme disease, parasite, bacteria, what? We just got to be using the cat's claw. We got to be using, we got to be using natural. We got to be using the vitamin C. We got to be using, you know, the, the parasitical cleanses that are natural to get people out of the woods. So when it comes down to the show, I'm about knowing what really is what. And I don't like guessing games. I'm going to tell you right now, when it comes down to health, I don't like guessing games. I don't like it at all. So one thing when I was younger that I was thankful for, when I just started to, you know, was turning a young teenager, I was 12, 13 years old, just coming on the cusp of that with spirit. And spirit was already in my life since age four, talking and rambling to me nonstop about, you know, disease and health and conditions and everything. And at 12 or 13 years old, there's coming to a certain point. And remember all the different points in time where, where, where revelations occurred in me, because even though spirit was talking to me at age four and telling me what's wrong with somebody, I was like a robot because, you know, I, I had to just hear spirit and then, and then voice out what spirit was telling me in, you know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, of course I had feelings <laughs> and everything else, but it was just like taking what spirits information and saying it. So having revelations at six, seven, eight, nine years old, they, they'd come, but they I remember the different points of revelation would come and, and, you know, and speak to me. And I remember, you know, at age 12, 13, the revelation coming where, I don't like guessing games. I'm lucky because, you know, I don't have to do a guessing game because I remember, you know, uh, talking to some, some people that were chronically ill at 13 years old and they're like, well, I don't really know this. This doctor thinks it's this or this person thinks it's this. I don't know what it is. And I was like, whoa, that's guessing game stuff. Spirit, what's going on? Here's what's going on. And I was thankful as a revelation at age 13 where I don't have to play a guessing game. <laughs> I mean, because of spirit, not because of me. If it wasn't for spirit, I, I don't know what I would be doing. I don't know what I'd be doing. Whatever, whatever it would be, I hope it would be productive. But the, the point is, 
the point is, is that so when it comes down to it's okay if it's if it's an alternative natural guessing game or you know okay let's do the fad and trend now it's not candida anymore the big trend of candida 24/7 was out now what we're heading into the parasite uh, trend now it's 24/7 parasites okay it's not candida anymore it's parasites so we're whatever trend we want to head to same thing with the candida thing People dealing with candida still suffering with, with, with one, one of the groups of strep that are antibiotic resistant sitting inside their gut that they've had since childhood from their first case of strep throat. Now it's in their gut sitting in there. It's antibiotic resistant because it was able to elevate due to antibiotics over the years. And the person's dealing with some scar tissue, some inflammation, some IBS, some whatever they're dealing with. And instead of it being candida now, because that was the trend, now it's parasites is the trend. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take anything as long as it's natural. But I'm going to tell you that it's not going to be a parasite problem that's giving you low-grade, long-term illness because parasites don't work that way. I promise you that. Instead, you're going to have low-grade bacterial and viral infections that are keeping you sick long-term like that. I hate being the messenger because I know someone's getting upset. But it has to be the messenger because it has to be it has to be figured out. You have to know the truth. You have to know the truth. You just have to. Even if you don't know it, even if you don't want to know it now, but five years from now you're gonna say, He was right, he was right, and it's five years from now. But so what I'm trying to say, the bottom line is, is that fine. You know, I could, we can do the parasite thing. You could do your parasite cleanses. Chances are you're just cleaning out some bacteria. We can do, we can, we can say it's parasite and not even candida anymore. You know, but there's still a lot of people hooked onto the candida thing too, but it, it's leaving. It's heading into the parasite. It's just the way things sh- turn and shift in the alternative trendy, trendy communities is just unbelievable when you watch it from a bird's eye view with spirit. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, when it comes down to worms, I was talking about earlier, worms are, worms are a, a little bit different. There's a couple of worms that, you know, will fall into the parasitical environment more because they work fast, they grow big. And if you don't knock them out, they could really hurt you in the end. There's a couple of worms that can do that. And um, so that that is true right there. Most of the other worms, you know, they could they could sit inside you, and they can sit inside organs. They can they can antagonize you. And but but there's ways of cleaning them out and getting rid of them. They're not they're not the kind of thing where you beat them or you don't, or they beat you. They don't do that, so they don't fall under the true parasitical parasitical world they're almost neutral a lot of the worms are almost neutral not all of them not all of them i'm not a fan of worms i don't want you thinking that but but not all of them and um most of them are neutral and they they fall in that category but we want them out because they're not being that productive they're not being that helpful people got all kinds of stuff inside of them all kinds of stuff Loaded with all kinds of bugs. That, that's another thing we have to understand here. Loaded with bugs. Good, neutral, bad, loaded. Different worms, you name it. Loaded. Okay? Doesn't mean they're feeling sick. Doesn't mean they're feeling bad. Doesn't mean they're hurting. Doesn't mean something's, you know, that they're living a poor, poor life. Somebody could be playing tennis, drinking wine... Eating, you know, eating, uh, I don't know, um, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> come up with something, eating appetizers that, that are greasy and God knows what, pigs in a blanket. I don't know what, they're, whatever, chocolate cake, and doing whatever they want and feeling good. And they're loaded with bugs and worms. And, and, and they could be loaded with bugs and worms 
all the way until they're 90, until some kind of other problem occurs. Okay? And it, and but yet if they had if they had, you know, a pretty good viral infection causing some serious CFS, that would be a viral infection. If they had some serious RA caused by a viral infection, they'd have some RA. If they had some multiple sclerosis caused by a viral infection, they'd have multiple sclerosis. But but there's all these other bugs. They're not even in they're not even in there in that category. And they and they leave trails. And they leave trails in our feces. They leave trails in our stools. Stool samples at the doctor's office is what I'm saying. They leave trails. I mean, it's a smorgasbord in there. I don't even know if I said that right, the term. So, okay, so what do we do? What's the bottom line? If you're someone feeling sick in the guts, you know, just generally, you got inflammation, inflammation, inflammation. Chances are you got some kind of low-grade bacterial or viral infection and mostly bacterial infection. If you're someone that's dealing with, you know, any kind of intestinal uh, disorders, any kind of t- intestinal problems whatsoever, you're inflamed somewhere. So you're dealing with strep bacteria. You're dealing with a viral infection. You're dealing with something that's going on in there. And we say it's parasitical and we try to do all these different parasitical cleanses. It's, you could try that. But, but w- what I would do is I would first, first and foremost is, you know, get rid of the foods that can feed any kind of bacteria that could feed any kind of problem. See, notice how we're switching off a little bit. We're leaving parasites for a little bit, leaving parasites, and we're moving into bacteria. Because there's a reason. Exactly, there's a reason. Because of the very fact that most people diagnosed with a parasitical infection, they're dealing with some kind of bacteria. And so, so that's one thing. You want to get rid of foods that can feed anything, cause anything like that in, in, in that sense. You want to get rid of uh, the eggs and the dairy products, milk, cheese, butter. You want to get, get rid of gluten, which can feed any of that. Canola oil, you want to be careful there. You want to keep your animal product products down to a degree. I'm not anti-animal product. Um, and so, you know, respect all diets. Everybody's, you know, got this individual thing going on. Respect that to we're all different, you name it. But I would reduce the amount of animal products you're on as far as meat or chicken, I'd reduce it. Um, keep it down to once a day. If you're big onto animal protein, keep it down once a day. Make room for things that will get rid of bacteria and kill it over time. There, what you want to do, okay, let's just say you're filled with parasites. Let's just say you were diagnosed with parasitical infection. You got parasites in the gut. What, what would you need to do? You would need... It, you know, okay, I'm, I'm sure it would be bacteria, not parasites, but what you would need is food that will feed beneficial bugs in your intestinal tract long term. So you want to bring in more of those foods. So it'd be more of bringing in dandelion greens when you can, bringing in arugula, um, juicing things like fennel, you know, the bulbs, fennel bulbs, really rich in vitamin C. Juicing fennel bulbs with celery um, and cucumber, bringing in cilantro, parsley. Parsley is incredible for feeding good bacteria and starting to knock down bad bacteria. So you want to make room for some of these things. And if you're eating two eggs in the morning with a slice of bacon, you know, really good cured, you know, high quality farm raised bacon, pasture raised bacon, and you're eating for lunch, you're having chicken and a little salad, not much in there, you know what I mean? And, you know, for dinner, you're having a couple of granola bars in the afternoon for dinner, you're having, you know, four ounces of grass-fed beef and a few steamed vegetables or something like that. It's not enough to actually, so you want to make room. You want to make room is what I'm saying. And if you're plant-based, you want to make room too. Because if you're plant-based, you might be eating too many crackers, too many of the fun crackers, that I see in the health food store, all the different fun crackers they're making, you know, from raw crackers to dehydrated crackers to freeze-dried stuff to everything you've ever seen in the world to brown rice this to everything, you know, gluten-free, all of it, grain-free crackers, you name it. You want to you want to make those aren't going to those all that kind of stuff as a vegan is not going to clean out feed good bacteria. So you want to make room for these things. You want to make room for more kale. 
If you can't eat or chew a lot of this stuff, throw a little bit of it in a juice. Make two kinds of juices. Do a celery juice for your liver and your hydrochloric acid so you can start killing off bacteria. Hey, if it's parasites, then we'll start building up your hydrochloric acid, make you stronger for a parasitical infection, meaning to knock out a parasitical infection, especially if you actually get a real parasitical infection in your life because you get food poisoning or some or drink some stale water somewhere and you get a parasite. Then you want the celery juice in your life building up your hydrochloric acid so you can you have a better chance at killing anything that invades or gets in there. But the point is, is that You do two juices then. You do your celery juice, and you could do another juice with a lot of different things in it. If you can't chew a lot, if it's hard to chew or put anything in the food processor and eat it that way, then you can, you can, you know, put different, different greens if you want in, um, in a juice and that you put a little parsley in a juice, put a little cilantro and parsley, you know, put some fennel in there and that's fine. Um, put a little kale in there if you want. Dinosaur kale, any kind of kale you'd like, green leaf kale, um, could put a little bit in there. So that's what you can do, secret weapons. Oregano oil, really great for any kind of bacterial infection in the gut. Anything that's parasitical, anything that you're diagnosed with parasitical. I want you to know something. If you're totally sold that you have a parasitical infection that you've been battling all this time and you got doctors, I'll, I'll, I'll be with you on that. I'll, I'll go along with you. But what I'm telling you is is to make room for all these other things. You know, do the oregano oil. That's really good for anything like this. Aloe vera is incredible too. Fresh aloe water. Go to my blog. Check out the fresh aloe water. You can do that too. That's a great secret weapon as well. Once again, lemon balm is that great. Thyme tea is great. You could do herbs such as eyebright. Eyebright is a great herb for any kind of... Uh, thing going on in the guts that you're worried about or, or in the bloodstream that you're worried about. Eye bright. Cat's claw. I'm going to tell you right now, cat's claw is incredible when it comes down to um, any kind of, you know, any kind of thing that's happening in there. I like cat's claw for knocking down the Epstein bars, for knocking down the uh, HHV6s and the herpes infections and the shingles. I like cat's claw for all of that, but I like cat's claw for E. coli, streptococcus. I like it for all the bacteria, C. diff, everything that's residing in us. But if you're really attached to the fact that you think you got this long-term parasitical infection, like say Babesia or something like that, or anything in the Lyme category, which was, like I said, Babesia really is a hybrid. It's not a parasite. Then use the cat's claw for that too. Now that's what's happening with Lyme doctors. A lot of Lyme doctors, they're just like, well, you know, they, they get on the parasitical tick. I mean, the, the kick, <laughs> and then they get, they're, they're totally into, you know, you got Lyme, but you got parasites, different other parasites also in the gut. And they're just, they're everywhere. They're all over the place. But what are they doing? They're offering you cat's claw now because they know that, hey, whatever it is I'm after, I'm going after it. So, you know, bring in the cat's claw. Podiarco, that's a great one too. Um, we can bring that in. That's a, that's, a good, that's a good weapon all on its own. Olive leaf, another great weapon. Um, that's a great one. Um, teas like elderflower, really good. If you think you got some kind of, you know, something going on. Even if you just got sick recently with something and you think you got a piercing, which you could. That's the whole point. You can get in. You can get it literally. You can get, come down with a real parasite, and it could be instead of a severe reaction, a more kind of middle of the road where you're feeling sick for three weeks because you're battling a parasite. Like I said, but you'll you'll kill it off, or it'll stay with you and taunt you, like like I was saying earlier. Um, do the elderflower tea. Really great. For feeding all the good bacteria in the gut, all the good microorganisms that weigh against the, um, the something like a dangerous parasite. And that's a whole nother point. There's a whole bunch of neutral bugs in us. Neutral bugs. And believe it or not, even Epstein-Barr or vi- other viruses don't want a parasite around in the body. And will actually help you rid such a thing. Will help you rid such a thing. Why do you think a lot of people who deal with chronic autoimmune from Epstein-Barr don't catch too many flus and colds? Many of them, not, not all of them, many of them don't catch flus and colds 
Because guess what? Because the Epstein bar is knocking out the flu virus for you. That's what happens. It actually knocks it out. It acts as your immune system sometimes because it doesn't want another invader. That's another thing that occurs. And so when it comes down to parasites, a lot of times, a lot of these neutral or more annoying bugs that we carry and reside inside of us will knock out that dangerous parasite for us or push it, help push it out. Um, so that's, you know, just letting you know the different things. Coconut water is really good for any kind of parasitical or any kind of thing going on with the guts, a little bit of coconut water. Lemon water, lime water is really antiparasitical. Um, so these are some of the things you can do. And uh, we, we can even do another show on this too, and we'll go into other stuff. I might have, I might have burned out our time on on talking on different you know variables with all this. And my apologies, seriously, greatly if if if, <laughs> if I burned up any time. Uh, and then, <laughs> so basically, what we're usually feeling is that bacterial damage, though, that resides inside of us. That's what we're feeling when we're feeling chronically ill. And we're dealing with scar tissue inside our liver, scar tissue inside our spleen, scar tissue on our pancreas, scar tissue in our small intestinal tract, scar tissue in our stomach lining. You know, that's what we're dealing with a lot. Low hydrochloric acid, sluggish liver, um, food sensitivities because of so many reasons of all these different variables. And we're dealing with uh, and the heavy metals and other things that are feeding bacteria. So you have to, whether you, listen, if you think you've got a parasitical, long-term parasitical infection, and that's what you've been diagnosed with at the doctor's office, get on the heavy metal detox. Start taking heavy metals out. Start taking mercury out, aluminum, lead, arsenic. Try to get rid of these metals because chances are those metals are feeding some kind of bacteria, making you feel like you're still parasitically sick. And maybe you did have a parasitical infection at one time that came and went, but the long-term thing that's occurring that you're dealing with is not parasitical anymore. If you, and, and, you know, another thing too, you clean your diet out really good, the worms will go away. You'll see them in the toilet over time if you clean your diet out that good. If you keep yourself clean, and like I said, I'm not anti-animal protein, but if you go animal protein free for a stint of time and do a tremendous amount of greens and green juices and a little bit of fruit, You'll watch worms come out, and you'll get rid of them for good, including worm eggs. Just keep that in mind. If you do a lot of olive leaf, you'll really, you'll really help get rid of that. If you want to expel worms, do golden seal two weeks on and two weeks off. Two weeks on, two weeks off for gold, with golden seal. Golden seal, two weeks on, two weeks off, and you'll expel worms right out of the body. Worms do not rule our world when we know what to do and we know how to clean them out. Garlic kills out and deworms us. Garlic, garlic and onion, especially garlic. But make sure you do the golden seal. If you think you have some parasitical infection that's long-term, do the golden seal for the parasite then. Two weeks on, two weeks off, and you can literally change your life. And chances are you'll be also killing off streptococcus that's giving you IBS and, 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 and mild Crohn's and colitis and everything else with the shingles virus. So these are some of the things you can do. Thank you for being on the show with me today, with being here and being with me today. Um, you know, when Spirit gave me the gift to help people, it was for you guys, and that's the whole point. And I love you dearly. Thank you for, go, you know, go check out the thyroid healing book. Check it out. Okay. Bless you. Bless you. Love you. Bye.